Hello everyone, this is Hammertron here with a Friday Free Talk. This video goes up on a Friday and I'm just talking about some action figures in general, specifically uh, G.I. Joe action figures today. Um, I'm also going to talk about the Hasbro Haslab with the Dragonfly helicopter and I'm going to talk about the G.I. Joe vehicles. Now this is a little catalog that comes with the uh, vehicles, if we buy a G.I. Joe vehicle, or if we bought one way back in the 1980s, so you get a little catalog showing you everything that's available. So, I don't think they make these things anymore with the vehicles, what few vehicles they make. So, this is the cover of this one, and I think this one, let me see if I can find a date here. Now uh, here we could join a membership club and that expires in 1985 so I think this paper was made maybe in 1984 maybe as early as 1984 and I think this is maybe the third one that they came out with because it's not the first one. Uh, this I think is 1984 and I think G.I. Joe action figures and vehicles were made starting in 1982 and this is the earliest one I have but it's definitely not the earliest one um, because here we have a vamp mark II, and I don't have one of these papers that shows the vamp the original vamp so this is at least the second or maybe the third one because there are some other older vehicles that were not uh, on this paper but this one does have the dragonfly this is the original dragonfly so very nice toy helicopter and there's a little white button there that you move with your thumb in order to turn the rotors so very exciting then there are pegs on the landing skids to put the action figure. The same thing with this. Uh, this I think is the Fang and here is the Skyhawk. This was probably new for 1984 so it does have some pegs there to put action figures on the outside. So maybe not very realistic but we certainly uh, want to have more playable features. So, I'll make a few comments about the HasLab project and, and then look at some more of these uh, pictures in this little catalog in just a moment. So here's a picture of what I was looking at on the Hasbro Pulse webpage for the uh, G.I. Joe classified um, Dragonfly helicopter HasLab and I was looking at this earlier in the day on Thursday June 22nd so at this point there's 13,868 backers so they needed at least 10,000 to get the helicopter with Wild Bill funded they got that and then 13,000 to unlock the first stretch goal which was the Night Force ripcord now they need 16,000 to unlock the next stretch goal which is uh, Gloria some uh, character that was exclusive to Argentina uh, long long time ago so most people don't even know about that character I never heard of that character before now and then the next um, stretch goal unlocks at 19,000 and it's not clear if that next stretch goal will be reached which would be too bad um, because at two hundred seventy-four dollars and ninety-nine cents, uh, to get the the best possible deal with the situation here, you would want to have all the stretch goals reached, so you would get the helicopter and four action figures. Otherwise, well, even then, even with the four action figures, that's still way too expensive for this project. Although it does look pretty nice. I do like the Dragonfly helicopter and this does look nice. It has a lot of accessories and 
if we're looking at the picture there, to the right of the Dragonfly helicopter, there's a, a flight stand where we can pose the helicopter in the air to make it look like it's flying, which is great for dioramas. Also, what's great for the dioramas is there's some blast effects and it looks like some uh, rocket effects. So it looks like the uh, dragonfly is in the middle of action. So I do like that. That's uh, something that we did not have um, about 40 years ago with the original G.I. Joe action figures. There's no way to really um, pose it in a flying pose and, and no uh, blast effects for the weapons. So um, we do have some um, nice features today that were not available then. However, this is still just way, way too expensive. This is something that really should be sold through retail stores. And um, yes, it it is pretty big. I hear that it's almost three feet long, but uh, if you go to a retail store, sometimes you do find very large items. And those very large items can be bought for less than $20. So um, I don't see how stocking these in retail stores would really be a problem. So I'm a little disappointed that this is the way things are going. And I'm a little disappointed that this... Um, Haslab is actually going to be successful because that just tells Hasbro that they can keep doing this instead of releasing some nice vehicles in retail stores where anyone and everyone can actually find it and get it. So I'll get back to the um, G.I. Joe catalog from 1984. So let's get back into looking at this catalog from 1984. As a kid when I got the vehicle, it was really nice to get one of these. And I really enjoyed looking at the pictures of the other vehicles that were available. So this one, I'm pretty sure it's from 1984. And I think this is when they introduced the Zartan action figure. Zartan and his swamp skier and his color change ability. So that was very um, entertaining. And let's take a look at the inside here. Which side should we look at? Let's look at this other side. <clears throat> so they did have some hang gliders. I think very cheap. I don't know if these were plastic or cardboard. So nice little um, toy to play with outside. I guess uh, kids were not worried about losing or breaking their action figures then. Or they could transport their characters in these little um, belt boxes. Or action figure collector cases. Where we can keep the file cards and some individual characters, action figures. And here we have the Dragonfly, the Fang, the uh, Skyhawk. So back then we had to hold these in the air ourselves or we had to be creative and maybe use string to try to hang these from the ceiling. So nowadays we have these plastic stands to simulate aerial activity and also some blast effects to show the rockets being launched. So nowadays that's pretty nice but back then we didn't have it so we we actually had to use our hands. And then we have some other vehicles. Here's the Rattler. This is when the Rattler was introduced and they showed us what we could do with it. Turn the wings so it can land and take off vertically. So very impressive. We have some nice tanks. The Mobat, the Wolverine, and the Hiss Tank. And then a few more vehicles. We have the Ram Cycle, the Polar Battle Bear, Vamp Mark II, and the Cobra Stinger. So those are very nice. And here's the Sky Striker. So I really like the backgrounds. They 
It looks like they tried to put it in a realistic um, background. So here they made vehicles and they were guessing that these would be successful and uh, their guesses, maybe educated guesses, uh, they were successful. They didn't worry about funding. They um, paid for the, the molding and the tooling up front and then released it in retail stores and then they started making sales. They also had comic books and cartoons to let kids know about G.I. Joe and the different characters and vehicles. So they took more chances back then and it actually paid off because here 40 years later people are still very interested in G.I. Joe. Let's take a look at the other side. So here we had an impressive large uh, play set or diorama, the G.I. Joe headquarters. And then a lot of smaller sets like battlefield sets and battle stations. Lots of uh, play sets and different ways to display the action figures and actually play with them. And the APC. And here are the characters. The individual action figures. Now they did sell action figure uh, accessory packs, extra weapons. Um, because some of these, like I had a, a breaker action figure and he actually did not come with a weapon. I was kind of surprised when I got him. He was a communications officer and he didn't have a gun like he did in the cartoon. So uh, I never did. I never did get these uh, accessory packs, but this is where we get the extra guns to make sure that our um, characters are well armed. So I think, a little hard to tell, but I think these action figures up here are part of the older wave. Uh, they're still selling these, but eventually they will um, phase most of these out, you know, like the breaker and the grunt and the zap. They'll phase them out and they're replacing them with some newer characters that are coming out. And then here are some, I think, some of the newer characters. Uh, there's the Blowtorch, there's the Baroness, the Firefly. I think he was new for this year. So, a lot of great action figures. And then we have some more... Um, vehicles here some accessories some trailers that we have to pull around by with the vamp some uh, Cobra guns and uh, G.I. Joe guns and the slugger very cool looking vehicle there so this just adds to what you can do have the have these pulled around by the vamp or the stinger and put them into place and, and set up some battle dioramas. So, a lot of fun. Now here is another massive vehicle, very large vehicle that was actually sold in the retail store. So it's a big box. And, you know, most of these vehicles, well, I think the larger ones anyway, had an action figure included. So we had a large box with a nice picture on it and then in the corner there'd be a little window where we can see the action figure so the this, this um hovercraft this killer whale comes with cutter a member of the coast guard so when we buy these boxes the dragonfly the rattler the the killer whale um we have a window where we can see the actual action figure that comes with it so it's always nice to be able to see what you're buying before you actually buy it. So this is, this was big and it actually floated in the water and there's a little uh, button you push in order to spin the um, propellers here to simulate that it's moving but it actually floated in the water. So a lot of fun. And then you can open this up and put action figures inside. So, very nice, very nice details. Yeah, so a lot of playability. 
and they weren't too worried about being able to sell this or not sell it. They, they put it in the stores and waited to see what happened. You know, they had the cartoons and the comic books to make sure the kids knew about it. Here's the water moccasin. And the shark. So, kids were actually encouraged to play with these in the water. So, so these things actually floated. And then here's some very small um, accessories. These are like drones. So, G.I. Joe was kind of a science fiction story, a little bit advanced. So, these things were actually drones, uh, either remote controlled or little mini robots with rolling weapons. So, um, I'm sure when they were making these toys to begin with, um, they were probably inspired by real world things, so maybe the the military was working on remote controlled vehicles and and they were simply inspired by that. And then this this is really entertaining, a nice little uh robot suit which um you could actually have an action figure inside or it could stand on its own without an action figure. And then here's the claw. So a lot of fun uh, vehicles and play sets, a wide variety of things at different price points, but always something for um, some kids to be able to enjoy and play with. So even today with a six inch scale action figure, I could make a lot of these things and they could sell it at retail because I'm sure a lot of people would be happy to just go to the store and see the actual box, see what they're getting, and get it immediately. So, looks like those days are long gone. Hopefully some uh, toy company will be able to bring it back and bring back the enjoyment and excitement of having some vehicles and action figures ready to go as soon as you uh, see it in the store. Uh, I do have a few more of these from later years, so I'll get to those later. Uh, thank you for watching my Friday free talk here. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these vehicles and these catalogs. You know, which one of these is your favorite. And please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my future reviews where I review actual action figures and playsets and I also talk about some of the catalogs and I have other commentary and opinions about the way the uh, toy industry is going. So I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.